Um, first of all, delighted to be here. Uh, delighted to want to tell you about Emeticis. We're uh, bringing a good portion of our executives here uh, to Nashville. We're very excited about it. Um, we're uh, just delighted that uh, we've gotten just such a warm uh, greeting from you all. Uh, we feel strongly that uh, Nashville, the, the, the osmosis that we're going to get here, is just going to be incredible. And that's part of the reason why we decided to bring uh, a lot of our functions in here. We're going to be located at Cummins Station. And so we're hoping to be uh, take a, a home health and hospice company and try to become a little hipper. And uh, so hopefully, and then we'll have Java and maybe get a tattoo, or, you know, so it's all going to be good. Uh, I've also offered, uh, you know, cash prizes if somebody gets an emeticist tattoo. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, but what I wanted to talk to you about is talk to you a little bit about Emeticis as a company so that you all know what you're getting into your community. And I'm looking at this as an opportunity, frankly, to look for partners and to look for uh, the, the whole reason why we're here. Look for engagement, uh, look for uh, smart people to start to crack some problems. Because what I'm going to describe to you is an industry that I think has a tremendous future but I also think as an industry, if we don't start to advance and start to add some new capabilities and skills, I don't think our future is going to be that interesting. I think it'll become commoditized like you're seeing in a lot of the post-acute world. Um, just by way of background, um, I, I'm in the, I've been in this job for seven months, so obviously I know everything. Uh, and, uh, but prior to that, uh, I couldn't hold a job. So prior to that, I was a McKinsey guy. Um, and got into healthcare, worked at uh, Tenet Healthcare, uh, then went out and started a company called Broadlane, which is a group purchasing organization. We sold that. Uh, was at the advisory board, uh, worked in the in the in the M and A and business development functions at the advisory board, and was at Humana most recently uh, for about five years before I came on to Emeticis. So I think that probably the I think what the when the board hired me. I think what they basically were trying to do is say, let's try to take somebody who's, you know, can actually sing the healthcare version of the Johnny Cash song, I've Been Everywhere, um, and, uh, and, and really try to work across the spectrum. Because what we're seeing in healthcare is that uh, uh, if you don't work across the spectrum, as things become more integrated, as there's verticalization, as there's, as there's consolidation that's occurring out there, in my old business, my old company is getting acquired for close to $40 billion. I mean, you're, you're seeing seven major payers that are out there. If all this works out with the DOJ, you're gonna have four. So I think some of the implications for contracting for people that offer services there, you're also seeing as a reaction to that, providers are doing the same thing. So you're seeing a lot of consolidation in this space. And so for those entrepreneurs out there, this could be interesting, uh, but it's, it's certainly a game of really intensive musical chairs in terms of uh, some, some of the areas uh, are starting to do that. And there will be a downflow from that, I'm very sure of that. Um, so I think as we're all thinking through where we live in the ecosystem, there's some big players out there and they're getting bigger and, uh, and they'll probably remain hungry and they'll probably, as, we, as there's pressure from the government in terms of ACA, there will certainly be an, a need to scale. So I think that's what we're starting to see. And then I think what, what we're trying to do in our strategy that I'll explain to you later is um, is we're trying to say uh, the home is where healthcare should be administered. And there's good reasons for that. And so that's our objective. If we stay where we are, which is classic, traditional Medicare fee-for-service, skilled care, I think there's the danger of being commoditized. And that's not something we certainly want to be in. So let me give you some statistics on, on Emeticis. We're about 13,000 employees. We're in 34 states. Uh, we have 400 care centers. Um, about 11,500 of our folks are clinicians, mainly nurses and physical therapists. Um, hospice is about a fifth of our business. We're about a 1.2, 1 almost $1.3 billion business. The great thing that I like 
And this is why it's a real privilege for me actually to work at this company. Because I've been, you know, as I, as I first started out, I really started to see what home care is all, all about and certainly what hospice is all about. Uh, we make uh, 57,000 calls a day. We see 57,000 people a day. The most vulnerable people uh, in their homes, uh, people at the end of life and people who are really struggling, who are homebound. And our objective is to make their lives better um, or in the case of hospice, to make them comfort, more comfortable as they, as they move out of life. And so that's our really objective. So it's a real privilege to lead this, this company that I think works and, and does the right thing. I think hospice is the right thing. When it's appropriate, it, it is the right thing. And I think it's more appropriate in more cases uh, than not. So, and then home health is certainly appropriate. As you all know, you've all heard the stories, you're all healthcare professionals. You know uh, what it's like, the institutionalization uh, of, of people, it tends not to produce the best results. We believe that the best results can be, particularly as the advancement of technology occurs, uh, we believe the, uh, that the home should be the place where we can uh, start to expand the scope of services we can offer. So being a McKinsey guy, you probably have, those that have had to suffer through uh, uh, and pay the bills of McKinsey, um, you, uh, uh, we obviously like charts that try to put everything on one page and uh, sadly, once you're there, you can't get that out of your DNA. So um, what we're trying to do here is, is just do a couple things well. And we, we have our strategy in terms of new game, uh, same game, new game. And, what we're trying to do is provide outstanding outcomes for patients in the home. Uh, we do that through 400 centers in uh, 34 states. Um, there's clinical distinction, I think, is now a must. What we're seeing on the regulatory fronts, um, you've seen it in the insurance business, you see it in the hospital business, uh, is that quality is being more and more emphasized. The game will be won and lost on quality. The game will be won on, and lost in terms of the, how you take six pa sick patients, get them appropriately coded, and then how you take care of them. That is the key thing. So if you aren't cl clinically distinctive and if that reflection of you is not shown as the ratings, star ratings, these other things start to occur, you're going to have a problem because it's going to be harder and harder to pick based on relationships. It's going to be quality will be the thing that we're, uh, and we're seeing this very strongly in the market. Uh, luckily, we have very good scar, star scores, and these just started for our business, and stars are the quality metrics that are out there for those that don't know this arcane business. Um, and therefore, for us to continue to win business, to be the, peop the, be the, 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 the company that people choose, we have to drive clinical distinction. Clinical distinction is basically in the hospital business now, readmissions. Clinical distinction with the physicians is making sure people stay at home and recover at home. So that's, that's the area, and this is what we drive there. Uh, healthcare, I won't do a Barbara Streisand thing and sing, sing people uh, for you, but uh, healthcare is all about people, okay? 85% of our costs are people. They're clinicians. Um, healthcare services about people delivering high quality healthcare. If you have the right people with the right tools, you'll deliver great results. And the great thing about clinicians, they're a different breed. They want to be paid fairly, but mainly they stay at places where they can deliver good products and really take care of people. And so that's why we're in a real special business because the people that do the, that work for us want to take great care of their patients. If they don't have the tools to do that, if they don't have the knowledge, if they don't have the support, they won't stay with you. It's, a, it's an important thing that once you get the people, you develop them. Operational excellence and efficiency, that's like anything. There's a lot of waste in this system. Um, uh, we're pushing it more and more of it out, but there's, a, there's ways to start to streamline and driving growth, which is what I'll talk about uh, further. But this is the same game. This is what everybody in this business has to do. Um, and, and, you know, when I talk to some of my colleagues in the hospital business and uh, in other service lines business, largely they're uh, focusing on the same things. The interesting thing also about uh, the home care business is we really only deal with the post-acute world. So we get from the hospitals in general, 
We get people coming down the sluice and it's like, you know, those kiddie slides. Kid comes through the slides and it's all of a sudden, it's, uh, it's uh, oh my gosh, uh, what did I get here? Uh, it's not Jimmy, it's Sally. Uh, this is what happens and so it's very, very hard. There's no continuity of care to do that. So the key thing in the post-acute world uh, is how do you get the right information? Uh, how do you start to coordinate care? We also believe there's a role for home care, particularly with chronically ill folks, who are the most expensive in the system. We believe that, uh, uh, that there's a place to play in the pre-acute world. Managed care has figured that out. At Humana, we bought a home care company and turned it into a pre-acute co care company. It's grown nine times the size and has saved hundreds of millions of dollars in cost. And so there is a play there. The other way is there's, you can go straight to the doctors. So the new game actually is how do you take home care and all the skills that you need, and these are the skills we all believe we need here. Better uh, analytics, data management, you know, we all know what big data is, we've all heard that dream for a long time, but we gotta make it work. Assessments, discharge planning, you need to use unskilled with skilled, you need more telemedicine. When you do this, we believe we can play both in the pre and the, uh, and the post acute. The pre really is a nascent market at best, and it's largely utilized by managed care, those particularly good at capitation. So United Humana are very good examples of that. But the key is, if people go into the hospital sort of at random, all we do is do cleanup at the other end, and we can't get the good results we need there. And also, if we are more involved in the pre-acute space, less people will go into the hospital. Sorry for this, once again, more McKinsey DNA trolling through here. The, uh, uh, the, old, the old methodology when I was in the hospital business was there was this kind of vortex that would suck people in through a variety of, of, of uh, through hospital systems. They'd build in geographies, they'd build clinics, they'd, they'd acquire their hospitals outside, they'd start to buy doctors, and what they would do is all these referrals would drive things into the hospital, the most expensive place to take care of people. It's, it's appropriate in a lot of ways, but it is the most expensive place. Now what you've got is you've got ACOs in bundles and you have hospitals actually saying, I want to be an ACO, I want to be a bundle, so I'm going to actually reverse this whole process and I'm going to take everything that was pushing everything in out. So I'm skeptical about this. I, I know it's happening in some places, that's great. Population management, full risk. But I think it's going to be very hard to make a lot of these changes where people are so used to, after decades of building these types of infrastructures, to put this in place. This is where we believe that the, 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 the puck should be going. And that is, you use home care to take care of people. You work with the specialists and the PCPs, the, the physicians, and you try to keep, you try to develop individualized care plans to keep people at home. You work with clinics, you build clinics, you work with the hospitals that build them, you build your own, you, you joint venture, and you try to work with those clinics to constantly keep people at home. When it's appropriate, and this is what managed care is doing well, you admit them to the hospital, but you admit them through narrow networks. Generally, these folks have hospitalists, so they go into the hospitalists, they go into the hospital, they get, they get fixed, and then the hospitalists get them out, and then you put them back into the home. That's key. So if you look at how it works from a traditional perspective, it's kind of, everything's very episodic. And so we see people, once again, we see people coming down the sluice. Out of the hospital, they come right to us. Out of a, some other post-acute institution, we'll see them coming down the sluice. And what it happens is we see this repeated over and over again. It's very expensive because often people bounce back into the hospital. What we think the new paradigm should be is we think, People ought to come to us and say, how do we get people to age in place? How do we get people to stay at home? And then we do assessments, we build care plans, we have monitoring and measuring. You can do this with technology, obviously with telemedicine, with some monitor monitoring sensors technologies out there. You have innovations, it's proactive versus reactive. You do assessments, you, uh, you reassess, you build the care plan, you monitor, and you keep doing this. What you need to do care coordination is data, analytics, and then the appropriate staff at the appropriate time. And then you need all this coordinated in there. 
So you, you need the PCPs, the specialists, you need the RNs, you need the physical therapists, you need the private duty, unskilled folks, you need friends and family, family take care of people, and often they aren't included in the care plan. So med management, a classic example, did you take your pill, dad? Um, that's what you get, okay? And then community, you've seen with Beacon Hill, for example, how communities can get involved in the care of individuals and how important that is. So when you drive all this and also community resources, that's a big area for us, bringing in those community resources where they're available. You combine all this and you can keep someone where they want to be in the home, cheaper, better, more satisfaction. So when we talk about this, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to put a protective layer around, the, uh, around that person in the, house, in the home, and we're trying to stop this cost bouncing that's going on where we send people back and forth into the hospitals, where we send them through uncoordinated often, and often without building a real understanding of how these people ought to be cared for. So this is what we're trying to do. We have an asset that's here, actually. It's kind of a dormant asset. We started it up and then we shut it down. We're opening it up again. It's based here in Nashville, um, but it's called Clinically Home. And I'm really excited about this little company. Um, and the reason I'm excited about it is because its whole idea is we need to expand the definition of home health. And we want to do it in the more acute area. There are examples, good examples, of people who are doing things in the less acute area, and we think that's important as well, and we've got to start to play there too. Unskilled is really important. When you combine it with skilled, it keeps the cost down. The other thing we haven't seen tackled really well is including in the care plan, we haven't seen families included because they provide a lot of that care. So how does it all fit together? Who's the care coordinator in, in this? We believe we're going to take a stab at this. Is, we believe something like this is going to be important. We also believe that people would prefer to get taken care of in the home versus going to a hospital. And so this is what we're trying to drive. And these are the capabilities we're looking for. Once again, enhanced monitoring, telemedicine, analytics, data. So any of you out there in this area, I think if you're, if you're working in this area, you've got a lot of promise in terms of trying to drive some of these things. And this is what we believe the size of the market is. Now, the great thing about healthcare is everything's huge. It's like, oh my God, we'll be so rich. I can't believe it. You know, uh, it's a trillion. It's three trillion. It's growing. To, it's oh my God. All we need is this little slice. Um, so who knows? <laughs> um, so you know, we believe that, uh, and and our an, our analysis actually shows that about thirty to you know, and this. In, you know, inappropriate admissions, we've seen that, are suitable for uh, home hospitalization, our version of it. We have 32 examples of where we can take care of people in the home, and so we want to do that. And we believe that it's obviously a huge addressable market. This is a perfect, this type of research is a perfect people for those people in, uh, in the 70s who smoked uh, way too much pot. Uh, it's so big. Okay, last slide. Wow. Um, okay. So, so this is uh, this is uh, um, this is what it all looks like. I mean, it's fundamentally a sorting system. Um, when you sort properly, and people come into the ER, and then you can look at the types of diagnosis that you're getting. We have 32 diagnoses that can basically say we want to take them into the home, and that's what we're looking to do. So it's, it's a, once again, it's a sorting process where people go into the ERs. We think with ACOs and bundles, this is gonna be a very effective way to partner. Managed care is all over this, so we're excited by some of the more advanced thinking in managed care about this. And then the last thing I'll say is, um, uh, we, uh, we're also gonna be moving down the non-acute piece. And so I think the key here is what we're all talking about, is once again, if, if we can coordinate the care if we can drive care coordination, we can really take better care of people. We don't lose people through the, through the cracks. We, we drive them into the right areas. We can keep them in lower acuity areas. Um, with the advancements we're starting to see in technology, we can really start to keep people at home. And so I think there's gonna be a great future and we're looking forward to being here and exploring it and expanding our thinking here in Nashville um, on you know, how can we become the aging in place company uh, and how can we transform from traditional home care to aging in place? 
So I really appreciate uh, uh, being here and it's a real honor to be here and uh, we're just delighted to uh, be starting out in Nashville and look forward to that, all that good osmosis that we'll be getting from you all. So thanks very much.